Let's look into the highlights of Jeju Ole Trail Route 9. First, Spot 1, Paksu Gijong and Wolabong. Paksu Gijong is a place with a wonderful scenery, such as columnar joints in Jungbun or shore cliffs on the Ewol Coastal Road. Combining two words, Paksu, which means spring water, and Gijong, which means a cliff, it has the meaning of a cliff with clean spring water which can be drunk with a bowl. This is the beginning of Jeju Ole Route 9. Because the route goes along the upper part of Paksu Gijang, it is better to appreciate the view from Daepyeong Pogu Port rather than from the top of the cliffs if you want to see the cliffs of Paksu Gijang at a glance. From the pebble coast under the port, you can enjoy the magnificent view of the Paksu Gijang that stretches like a folding screen. The vertical cliff is about 100 meters high. There are cafes where you can see Paksu Gijang and the ocean nearby the port, so we recommend you to sit back and watch Paksu Gijang at sunset. As you climb the pine forest path along the Jeju Ole Trail, you can see the secluded Daepyeong Pogu, where a red Sonya lighthouse, the lighthouse with a girl statue, stands. You can also see dry field farming on the upper side of the Paksu Gijang. If you have no reason to hurry, please take some time to enjoy the scenery. The reason why the level of difficulty of Route 9 is high is because of Wolabong. Wolabong, known for its challenging path, is an orum that spans three borders in the administrative district, Kamsanni to the north, Hwasunni to the west, and Daepyeongni to the southeast. There's a story that Wolabong is named after its appearance, which is similar to the appearance of the moon when it rises. Another origin story is that the name means tare, or kiwi, a kind of fruit. So this orum is called various names, such as Wolabong, tare orum, dore orum, and so on. Wolabong is 201 meters high, with a height of 80 meters on the seaside, with sharply carved cliffs. The Wolabong Trail is approximately 1,750 meters, and takes about an hour and a half to complete. Spot 2 Jinji Cave. As a base to invade China, this was a defensive base made around Wolabong and Songak Mountain by the Japanese army. Jinji Cave is where Japan intended to set up an outpost to fend off attacks from Allied forces and to protect Japan's islands. Around the end of the Pacific War in 1945, Japanese imperialists used Jeju Island as a last bastion to protect Japan and stationed a large number of soldiers here building coastal bases, roads, and facilities for military operations. The soldiers demanded food supplies from the Jeju people. At that time, the Japanese army built defensive fortresses around Wolabung and Songak Mountain and set up artillery batteries, tochka, or pillboxes, and a bunker to defend against the Allies at the coastlines of Songak Mountain, Sageri, Hwasun Port, and Wolabung. The coastal cliff of Songak Mountain has 15 man-made caves, with a width of 3 to 4 meters and a depth of 20 meters, these caves were used to hide torpedoes like the man-made caves around Songsan Ilchirbong and also were made to defend against attacks from the Allied forces. As they are unique historic sites during the Japanese occupation era, Jinji Caves are hard to find elsewhere on the Korean Peninsula. If you look toward the ocean from the caves, you will be able to see the Brothers Island dimly. Floating in the middle of the ocean, Hyeongje Island, Brothers Island, is an uninhabited island located 1.5 kilometers far from Jeju Island. Because the island looks different depending on where you stand, it will give you a little entertainment of observing the island at a different angle. 